Citizens in one of the world's biggest cities and China's biggest city, even bigger than Beijing, the city of Shanghai, is truly a modern horror story, a nightmare that nobody thought could ever be real. Citizens in their thousands, perhaps millions, screaming from their windows, pets being slaughtered, rioting and looting happening in supermarkets, people fainting and attacking the police. An absolute law and order situation in one of the biggest cities of the world is what COVID has done to China's Shanghai. Take a look. A terrifying scene in China's biggest city. Citizens screaming and wailing from their windows after endless days of a total lockdown. Videos like these leaking out of Shanghai depict an unthinkable, apocalyptic situation in one of the world's most advanced metropolises. Disturbing proof that the Covid pandemic is far from over and a new wave has brought a mega global city to its knees. Like something out of a dystopian science fiction movie, Chinese authorities have deployed drones to broadcast an ominous message. Control the soul's desire for freedom and do not open the windows to sing. This behavior has the risk of spreading the epidemic. The phrase, control the soul's desire for freedom, is a reference to a controversial remark made by a Chinese lawmaker during the first wave of the Covid pandemic in 2020, when the Chinese government imposed stringent lockdown measures in Wuhan, ground zero of the coronavirus outbreak. Things are so bad in Shanghai, videos emerging from the city show large groups of people raising slogans, cornering officials wearing hazmat suits before looting a supermarket, an open riot-like situation in several locations. The unsettling videos form a rare montage of public anger and pushback against the totalitarian Chinese government's iron-clad anti-Covid measures. All of Shanghai has been locked down since April the 1st. The eastern third of the city has been locked down even longer since March the 28th. The national government has sent in 2,000 military medics and 10,000 medical workers from other provinces to help in the fight against the Covid wave, fueled by the Omicron variant. The strain of testing and treatment is taking a heavy toll on healthcare professionals too. A video shared on Twitter shows a doctor being rushed out of an isolation facility carried by patients after he collapsed while performing duties. Due to China's zero tolerance policy towards Covid and the strict restrictions, the Consulate General of India in Shanghai has also shut down, forcing Indians to depend entirely on the Beijing Embassy. Under zero Covid, all 26 million inhabitants of Shanghai underwent mass testing. Anyone infected would have to be taken from their homes and quarantined. All close contacts of the infected have also been taken away and isolated. The rest have been barred from leaving their homes or apartment buildings, leading to these scary scenes. Plans called for four-day closures of districts while residents were tested. That changed to an indefinite city-wide shutdown after case numbers soared. Many residents of Shanghai have struggled to arrange for food deliveries to their homes during the lockdown. Children, including toddlers and infants, have sometimes been taken from their parents to be quarantined separately, although the Shanghai government is now starting to offer family quarantines for children with special needs. City officials have been apologizing publicly since last week and promising to improve the food supplies. The country that gave Covid to the world is seeing its biggest city reel from the latest wave. Bureau Report, India Today. Now the numbers uh, as far as Covid is concerned are rising in some Indian cities but they're still nowhere close to what's happening in China's biggest city of Shanghai. But the natural question everyone might be asking after watching such horrifying images from Shanghai is, could this outbreak in Shanghai in some way affect India? 
Experts thankfully say it's unlikely. Their reasons are Indians have better immunity because of their natural, uh, you know, infection. Immunity from natural infection is there in Indians so far. Indians have hybrid immunity because of the last three waves that India has been struck with. The current variant in China was in surge in India in January. So India has actually already seen the Omicron variant. I had the Omicron uh, coronavirus as well a few weeks ago. The same variant, the same variant is unlikely to cause a second surge in India is what experts believe. A majority of India's population is currently vaccinated and those numbers are actually increasing. So there is reason to believe that what's happening in Shanghai will not have any kind of adverse direct impact on India. But as always with the coronavirus, the, 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 the general caveat is things can spiral out of control. In a moment from now, I'll tell you about where things are at as far as India is concerned because numbers have started rising in India's national capital as well. I want to bring in Dr. Ishwar Gilada. He's a very well-known infectious diseases expert. He's been a uh, closely watching what's happening in Shanghai as well. Uh, Dr. Gilada, thank you very much. Good to see you. Uh, uh, you know, we've been, we've been watching these viral videos, doctor, coming out from Shanghai. I'm sure you've had a chance to see them as well. Uh, you know, one would have hoped and imagined that the world has gone past that kind of dystopian, almost apocalyptic existence. It is truly horrifying to see, uh, you know, what COVID has done to a city like Shanghai, sir. China's biggest city. See, China has gone mad. If you look at the total cases of China, they are 1,76,000 from the beginning of the pandemic. Either they are telling lies or their figures are not matching. On the other hand, uh, one news says that in uh, Shanghai itself, in last one month, they had 2,80,000 cases. In last two weeks, there is not a single death. So zero death. So I don't know why the China has a, this kind of policy that they want to show COVID zero China hero. I don't think by, by, by that way they can become hero. Uh, all over the world, they know that the vaccine has been manufactured in China. Uh, nothing till today has come out to show that it is not from China. WHO had three committees. Third committee is still looking at the possibility of originating, originating of the vaccine, uh, this uh, virus from uh, Wuhan. So I think China is going really mad. This kind of strategy of locking down uh, was initially uh, two years back was fine. At that time, we didn't know much about the virus. We didn't know anything about the vaccine. Uh, secondly, the Chinese vaccines, which is uh, there are two of them, Sinovac and uh, Sinopharm. These vaccines are weaker than any vaccine in the world. So and th that has been not uh, approved anywhere else than outside country, which is in Malaysia. Malaysia used three vaccines for vaccination. One was Pfizer mRNA, second was AstraZeneca, and third was Sinopharm. And what they found that after vaccination, whatever infections are happening, which are called breakthrough infection, they found and deaths happening out of breakthrough infection. If the proportion of death was one from uh, uh, AstraZeneca, that is Covishield in India, it was two from mRNA, it was 9.5 from Sinovac. That means Sinovac vaccine or uh, Sinopharm vaccine, they're failure. So uh, this kind of strategy of putting people under lock and key and uh, torturing them for just bed or bread, I think uh, this is the wrong strategy and they should, uh, they should have learned from all over the world. And lastly, I would like to give an example of Hyderabad or uh, the Telangana state in uh, India, yes. where they opened, up in, uh, they opened up in August. And despite the third wave, they did not close down. And we did not see much of a, a scale up in Telangana as versus the rest of the country or rest of the world. So I yes. think the strategies of lockdown, they are not going to work at all. It's, 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 it's actually really scary. And I want to bring in India today's uh, uh, you know, health, uh, uh, health correspondent and editor, Sneha Bordani, who's been looking not just at what happens here in India, but COVID affects all across the world. Sneha, you know, are, are we wrong in kind of reeling in horror at these videos from Shanghai? Because, you know, one would have imagined we are over the worst. This is the country that, you know, gave the world COVID. This is the country that is widely believed to have mishandled many parts of the counter-offensive on the virus. We all saw what happened in Wuhan. This appears to be many times worse, Sneha. Absolutely. And the follow-up 
zero COVID strategy, which is a wrong strategy to begin with, uh, to then believe that two years on you will eradicate uh, COVID and ensure it's not on your soil is wrong. Uh, when they locked down Wuhan uh, a little over two years ago, uh, very little was known about this infection, so nobody knew how to respond to that. Initially, in fact, a lot was said about how China is doing the right thing. But now locking down Shanghai and how uh, to ensure that the infection does not spread to other regions and doesn't really go out and affect other regions is something that China is looking at and that is the strategy which will not work. Uh, Shiv, I've been in fact speaking to many experts and they talk about the fact that there is little hybrid immunity in China which means that the population does not have infection, exposure to natural infection unlike a country like India which is giving us immunity from natural infection plus good rates of vaccination. Vaccination in children above the age of 12 has started as well which means that India is in a win-win situation even yeah. if cases increase. Plus, uh, to many who are looking at the situation in China and worrying, let me also tell you that it is the Omicron and the recombinants that are driving the surge in China. They say they have 27,000 new cases every single day. That is an underestimate to begin with. Even if the mm. cases are more, uh, it's very, very unlikely that uh, this particular variant is going to drive a fourth surge in India. What could drive a fourth surge is a, is a mutant uh, variant once again or yes. a new variant altogether. Uh, Dr. Gilada, one last uh, you know, uh, uh, question that I have for you is, are there any lessons, any, any warning signals from what's happening in Shanghai that India needs to take into account? We've heard what Sneha said. India is in a much better position. I sincerely hope that continues. But any learnings from what's happening in Shanghai, sir, for us? See, don't look at the East. Don't look at the West. India is the best. Currently, India is in a much better situation, as Sneha said that currently 90% of us have at least uh, once the infection, which is a natural immunity, uh, plus uh, almost 80% of the population is vaccinated with two dose. So hybrid immunity is close to 86%. Under this situation, we are not going to be uh, affected at all by uh, any kind of fourth wave. Secondly, this uh, uh, Omicron wave itself, don't look at numbers. There, uh, South Korea is giving uh, every day 3 lakh cases. But trajectory is very uh, good. Uh, people are not ending up with oxygen demand or bed uh, demand or ICU, or they are not dying. So when the death rate currently in the world is around 0.2%, which used to be around 2%. So it has one-tenth of the death rate, what would it have? And it is closer to what we can expect from even uh, flu, seasonal flu. So the COVID currently has become very close to seasonal flu. I think we should not be bothered about we should not have uh, school closed down, any other new strategies, any uh, just by uh, few ex escalation in numbers. India could digest easily 3 lakh or 3 lakh 15,000 cases per day almost two months back. So, just uh, escalation of 100, 200 cases in Delhi, we should not be bothered. And we, we should be happy that what we are doing currently. And China, in a such kind of health catastrophe, they should also learn from India. We initially copied China. We created jumbo centers. They were useless. We created lockdown. That was useless. So now we understand that these things do not work. We need to work in the uh, tandem with people, what people understand. And uh, by lockdown, you can't change people's behavior. Behaviors are totally different. So I think we are creating something new and uh, we, we think that uh, that thing will work. It will not, it's not going to work at all. East or West, India is the best. I really hope so. I really hope so. You know, as someone who has seen the worst of what's going on, we've covered it from, uh, you know, up close, as has Sneha. Uh, you know, I really hope. Aapke uh, mume ghi shakkar, sir. I really hope you are right. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> we, you, we prefer to, you know, hold our guard up as much as possible when it comes to COVID, given what we've seen in the second wave. But I thank you for your wisdom and all of the things that you've just pointed out. Thank <laughs> you.